This week, we highlight another life well lived. On January 27, 1967, three NASA astronauts in the inaugural Apollo 1 program were killed in a cabin fire as their command module sat on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The tragedy put the American space program in peril. But another group of unsung astronauts stepped up to ensure the race to the moon would continue and succeed. A physicist and marine fighter pilot named Walter Cunningham was a member of the second backup crew on Apollo 1, along with Walter Shira Jr. and Don Isley. Together, the three men would go on to make the first manned flight in the Apollo program, restoring hope that the moon was within reach. Cunningham joined the Navy in 1951 and became a pilot with the Marines during the Korean War, where he flew 54 night missions. After earning a master's degree in physics from UCLA and working on defense projects at the Rand Corporation, Cunningham joined NASA in 1963. Within five years, the civilian astronaut found himself launching into space with Shira and Isley on the Apollo 7 mission. The crew spent 11 days there in October of 1968, orbiting Earth 163 times and traveling 4.5 million miles while testing every conceivable system, procedure, and safety protocol. A first-ever live television feed from space. Good morning to everyone in television land. Gave the world a look at life inside the module and a listen as Commander Shira occasionally bickered with ground control in Houston. We had a lot of angry exchanges with the ground. We honestly didn't know until several, several days into the flight that everything we said with that mission was going directly to the news media. With the successful Apollo 7 mission paving the way, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were walking on the moon just nine months later. Cunningham left NASA in 1971, wrote a memoir six years later, and in 2008 received, along with his late crewmates, NASA's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Medal. Walter Cunningham, an American astronaut who led the way to the moon, died this week in Houston. He was 90 years old. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.